All right, y'all, we're back. So we're getting into chapter six now. In chapter five, we basically realized that Haman was happy, but wasn't the happiest because Mordecai was still alive. His wife and his friends were like, you know what? Hang a gallo. Let's ask the king in the morning if you can hang him. And then you can do your little banquet with Queen Esther after to celebrate. That's kind of what, you know, it was giving, right? So let's move on to chapter six because we need to see this story is getting juicy okay so i need to see what happens so chapter six that night sleep escaped the king so he ordered the book recording daily events to be brought and read to the king so basically he's saying that night for whatever reason the king just couldn't sleep so he wanted to go ahead and look at the book of daily events and so he requested for it to be brought to him and read to him they found on the written report of how Mordecai had informed on Big Thana and Teresh, two of the king's eunuchs who guarded the entrance when they planned to assassinate King Ahasuerus. The king inquired, what honor and special recognition have been given to Mordecai for this act? So basically he found out, hey yo, that same dude Haman's mad at Mordecai. He actually saved my life. What have we done to show him honor and respect for that? So y'all look, Mordecai about to get cool points, okay? So it says, the king's personal attendants replied, nothing has been done for him. The king asks, who's in the court? Now Haman was just entering the outer court of the palace to ask the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows he had prepared for him. What I told y'all, juicy. Because now the king is just coming to the realization that Mordecai saved his life at some point, but Haman is on his way in to ask him if he could take his life. If this ain't crazy, I don't know what it is. So verse 5 says the king's attendants answered him, Haman is there standing in the court. The king says, have him enter, the king ordered. Haman entered and the king asked him, what should be done for the man the king wants to honor? So just imagine now, before Haman could even open his mouth, the king's like, hey, 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 what can we do for the man the king wants to honor? So let's continue on. Haman thought to himself, who is it the king would want me to honor more than me? Haman told the king, for the man the king wants to honor, have them bring a royal garment that the king himself was worn and a horse the king himself has ridden which has a royal crown on his head. Put the garment and the horse under the charge of one of the king's most noble officials. Have them clothe the man the king wants to honor, parade him on the horse through the city square, and proclaim before him, this is what is done for the man the king wants to honor. So now, Haman's already mad because he's like, well, you just promoted me, so who... who <laughs> Who would you want to promote higher than me? Like, what is wrong with you, right? So, plot twist. <laughs> Haman's now giving instruction. He don't even know who he's about to honor. But let's continue in verse 10. The king told Haman, hurry and do just as you propose. Take a garment and a horse for Mordecai the Jew, who is sitting at the king's gate. Do not leave out anything you have suggested. Boy, 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 had to slap my car because guess what? The same man that you came there to hang the gallows on, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. You just gave a decree or an instruction, so to speak, to honor that same man. And the crazy part about it is you gave all the instructions. And then the king had the audacity to tell you, hey, 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 hey do it and don't leave nothing out that you suggested okay so this is really cool so Haman took the garment and the horse he clothed Mordecai and paraded him through the city square crying out before him this is what is done for the man the king wants to honor wow what what a plot twist okay so then Mordecai returned to the king's gate but Haman hurried off for home mournful and with his head covered Haman told his wife, Zeresh, and all his friends everything that had happened. His advisors and his wife, Zeresh, said to him, Since Mordecai is Jewish and you have begun to fall before him, you won't overcome him because your downfall is certain. So, again, why I said 
don't listen to certain friends because now his friends planted these evil thoughts in his mind even though so far it hasn't happened now they basically turn around and saying look since mordecai is jewish and you ended up having to honor him that way it's a good chance that you just it just ain't gonna work out for you, okay? And verse 14 says, While they were still speaking with him, the king's eunuchs arrived and rushed Haman to the banquet Esther had prepared. So just imagine that. You thought you was gonna hang him. Instead, you ended up giving advice and suggestions on how to honor him without you even knowing at first. Then you gotta go home looking stu stupid, okay? Like, stu stu stupid, okay? To your wife and the same friends who told you to hang this man. And you had to basically tell him, like, yo, I ended up honoring him. And before you could finish your story, the king's eunuchs was like, hey, 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 hey. second banquet, my boy. Stop talking. We got to go to another banquet today. Remember yesterday you was invited to another banquet? Yep. We got to go back to that banquet today. So yeah, we're going to continue with chapter seven next.